with unit one in unit two your your choice of evaluation question is critically important so um, you're going to choose the question which obviously maximizes your chances of getting as many miles as possible and to do this more often than not you're going to be presented with a choice of um, one question so one 25 mark question which allows you to talk about um, the, the, the performance of the UK um, economy in general terms which means that you can talk about um, GDP, you can talk about unemployment, you can talk about the trade deficits, the uh, budget deficit and inflation or you're going to be quite restricted in which of your macroeconomic indicators you can talk about. Naturally it's going to make your life a hell of a lot easier if you, talk, if you choose a question which allows you to talk about all of those macroeconomic indicators rather than any one of those in isolation. Okay, so um, that's, the, that's the first thing to bear in mind. The second thing to bear in mind is that um, if given a choice between um, speaking about the um, demand side, so aggregate demand and demand side policies, or the supply side and supply side policies, always choose um, the demand side, okay? Here you have, um, here it's much easier to structure your answer and go into technical detail, thereby picking up your analysis marks, simply because um, you can you can break down aggregate demand into your component parts. So you can talk about consumption, investment, government spending, and exports and imports, net imports, sorry, net exports um, separately, and that allows you to pad out your answer. Okay, so if you take a look at a few questions, I'll, I'll just um, run you through a few past papers to illustrate this point. So Jan 2012, um, context number one, question number four, um, you have a choice between um, a question here which says assess the likely impact of substantial cuts in public expenditure on the performance of the UK economy. So number one here allows you to talk about the performance of the UK economy in general terms. Number two um, you're looking at the demand side here so you're looking at, um, at the um, at government spending um, which is obviously a demand side policy. Whereas in question eight um, Jan 2012 says evaluate the extent to which um, external trade can be relied upon to bring about a recovery in the UK economy. Okay, so um, recovery in the UK economy that that alludes to the fact um, that you're going to talk about GDP and unemployment, not necessarily inflation. So whereas a uh, previous question it allows you to talk about all of your macroeconomic in indicators here, um, recovery in the UK economy that's quite specific to unemployment and um, GDP and it says evaluate the which to external trade so external trade I mean again that is a demand side um, a demand side factor you're not talking about productivity or um, competitiveness which would allude to supply side um, so again it's not too bad in that you can talk about the demand side here but um, given the fact that uh, you're quite limited you can't really talk about inflation you can't really talk about the budget deficit I'd probably steer clear from this question and choose um, question number four rather than question number eight okay all right so um, to summarize your choice of um, 25 mark evaluation question obviously that's going to dictate whether you choose context number one or context number two let's take a look at um, Jan 2012 question number four so this is a very nice question uh, remember we're looking for questions here in your um, uh, unit two paper so 25 mark question in your unit two paper um, which allows you to, to talk about the economy in general terms so it doesn't restrict you to any one particular macroeconomic indicator and also um, focuses on the demand side of the economy rather than the supply side. Okay, Jan 2012, question number four, it does exactly this. Um, so essentially it's a question on um, public expenditure, so government spending and the effect on um, the, the economy in general terms. So that, that question is absolutely perfect. It's exactly what we're looking for. Um, so paragraph number one, remember, um, for these 25 mark evaluation questions, you, you're going to have a, a tiered, uh, the mark scheme, it follows a tiered approach. So uh, first of all, your kind of lowest level of marks is knowledge, then application, then analysis, then evaluation. Um, the, your paragraph number one is going to be your introductory paragraph, and primarily we're going to be hitting those bottom two tiers, your knowledge marks and your application marks, okay? Your knowledge marks, they come from um, definitions. Um, so we're going to start off our answer with two definitions. And here's very, I mean, you, you can be, there's, there's no kind of set criteria as to what you're, you're, you're meant to define. Um, but given that it's a question on public expenditure, obviously defining um, what public expenditure is, giving some examples, and also um, how this ties in with the government deficit. 
Um, that makes a lot of sense. And obviously, um, it's a question on the demand side of the, the, the economy. So um, defining aggregate demand, that would also make sense. Um, so definitions done, tick. Um, next, reference to the extract. Okay, so um, here I picked out extract B line number five. Um, okay, and here is, it's just simply um, referencing to the extracts to show, um, to, to give specific examples of cuts in government spending. Okay, relatively straightforward. Um, so we've got our definitions, we've got um, our, so definitions for our knowledge marks, we've got um, references to the extracts for our um, application marks. Now we're going to set up our second paragraph by introducing um, the key concept here. So it's a question on um, public expenditure. It's a, a question on um, the government deficit and what would happen if we cut um, government spending. And it's very obvious here um, that a cut in government spending, obviously that's going to uh, reduce aggregate demand. And generally speaking, this is going to have a negative effect on the level of activity within the economy. Okay, so simply begin to present one side of the argument and um, it's, this, is the, this is the kind of the um, the argument that you're going to make in paragraph two, um, where we're going to pick up our analysis marks through, through drawing diagrams. We've introduced the main argument um, that we're going to present in uh, paragraph two in paragraph one. So that was simply the fact that uh, cutting government spending is going to reduce aggregate demand. Okay, we're going to uh, build upon our knowledge and application marks, and uh, we're going to expand upon this um, hopefully picking up analysis marks. The way we're going to do this is uh, by, by drawing a diagram. So uh, we're, we're talking about um, government spending here and the effect on aggregate demand. So start off, anytime you're talking about aggregate demand, it makes sense to, um, to, to state your aggregate demand formula. Uh, we've done that here. Um, again, this is going to help you not only with your analysis marks, but also your um, your knowledge marks, you're shown to the examiner, you understand what essentially what, what makes up aggregate demand. Um, and then we're going to draw our diagram. So um, you know that um, cutting government spending is going to reduce aggregate demand. So aggregate demand curve is going to shift to the left there. Um, and obviously this is going to have an effect on um, real GDP, unemployment and inflation. Again, okay, we've just shown that there. Right, in terms of your, um, just, just note that I made a little um, reference to the extract here. Um, don't restrict your, your references to the extract solely to paragraph one. So I, I know you said, I, sorry, I know I said um, that your paragraph one is going to be primarily looking at your knowledge and application marks, but you want to be um, picking up your, your application marks throughout your essay. So I'd say a general, a uh, good rule of thumb would be to um, introduce um, references to the extracts at least once per paragraph. So that's at least once per paragraph. Okay, and I've done that here. Um, so we've drawn our diagram. Um, one, two, uh, that's, that's going to pick us, a, that's going to um, get us our analysis marks. We now want to um, stand upon this and look at our evaluation marks. So from paragraph two onwards, um, every point that you want, to, every point that you make, you also want to evaluate that point. And I think a good, um, a good point of uh, evaluation for um, this paragraph, especially given that you've drawn a diagram, is to simply look at um, the spare capacity case and contrast that to the um, full employment case. So if you look back to my unit one video, and when I was talking about go to evaluation points in unit one, um, I said anytime you draw a diagram, comment on elasticities. What happens when I don't know, demand is elastic compared to the case where demand is inelastic. Here, um, it's not, you're not really talking about elasticities. Well, I, I suppose you are in, a, in an indirect kind of way, but you're more, um, you want to be um, very specific in talking about spare capacity versus full employment. If you can see here, my starting point is the full employment level, um, full employment kind of equilibrium within the economy, then cuts to my, um, cuts to government spending, they're not going to have that much of an effect on real GDP, whereas inflation is going to fall quite dramatically. Uh, contrast this to the case where uh, my starting point is, um, is the, the horizontal section of the aggregate supply curve, where there's lots of spare capacity. Look what happens to real GDP, okay? This, this cut in government spending um, is going to have a massive effect on real GDP, uh, but in terms of inflation, um, the price level isn't going to change that much. Okay, so those are um, those are the types of evaluation points that you should be making. 
um, paragraph two when you're drawing your diagram. Okay, paragraph two, you presented one side of the argument. Paragraph three, we're going to present a counter-argument. Um, so remember, we've chosen the question which allows us to talk about um, UK economy and the UK macroeconomic indicators in quite general terms. So if in paragraph two you said that um, the specific government policy in question is going to be detrimental to the UK economy, now you're going to make the counter-argument and say, oh, actually, um, this could be bad for, for um, one macroeconomic indicator, but it could also be good for another macroeconomic indicator. Um, so in paragraph two for this specific exam question, uh, we've said that a cut in government spending is going to lead to a, um, it's, it's going to be detrimental to, to economic activity. So it's going to be a bad thing for the economy. Paragraph three, you're going to present the counter argument and say that actually it could be a good thing for the UK economy. Okay, and obviously, if you're talking about a cut in government spending, um, you're going to link this to the fact that um, the budget deficit, the government budget deficit, could um, could improve. Okay, so we're going to go from a deficit to a surplus, or um, in the case of the current coalition government, we're going to go from um, a big budget deficit to a slightly less big budget deficit. Okay, so um, that's our that's our first point there, and. Um, obviously, you want to tie this into the fact that um, a reduction in the budget deficit is going to reduce our accumulation of debt and um, kind of over time, if we do eventually go from a deficit to a surplus, um, that's going to reduce our debt pile and reduce our debt payments. So that's a point that's been made in um, extract C, line number nine. Um, it's made in quite a roundabout point, but I think it's sufficient to, to reference this extract um, to, to pick us up further um, application marks. Um, now in terms of our evaluation of this point, so we're saying that um, a cut in government spending, that's going to be good for the budget deficit, whereas um, this might not necessarily be the case. So if, um, if say the government increases the level of taxation, I'm sorry, it reduces the level of taxation. So remember your the, the budget deficit is made up of two components. It's made up of your um, made up of government spending minus taxation. Um, if government spending is going down, but taxation is go also going down, then the net effect on the budget deficit may be relatively neutral. It might have a, a, a neutral, um, the government might announce a, a neutral budget. Uh, it won't say that explicitly, um, but um, obviously a lot of people have said that the 2015 um, budget, the, the coalition's 2015 um, budget was, was fiscally neutral. Okay, so um, as for the first evaluation point, stating that the budget deficit is made up of two po two components, and um, the, the net effect on the on the, the government budget deficit as a whole is going to be dependent on both of those two components. Um, second point you can make is the fact that um, if you're cutting government spending, then um, economic activity is going to decline, and the government's tax revenue is also going to decline. Okay, So although we're, covering, we're cutting um, government spending, this by almost by definition means that tax receipts are also going to fall because um, real GDP is going, to, is, is going to decline. Okay, paragraph number four, I like to term alternative forms of government policy. So in paragraph two, we've said X is going to happen. Paragraph three, we said Y is going to happen. Paragraph four, we're going to say, well, X might not happen because of this, or Y might not happen because of this. So um, looking at alternative forms of government policy that the government could um, implement to, to generate the same effects. So um, talking about a reduction in reduction in, in, in government spending and how that could, um, how that would benefit the budget deficit. Obviously, uh, an easy point to make here is that rather than, um, rather than cutting government spending, the government could just raise taxation and that would have the same effect. Okay, so a very similar kind of point to make, um, um, it's a very similar kind of point that you might have made in, in paragraph three, but if you haven't made it explicitly in paragraph three, I'd, I'd make it in paragraph four. Remember, it is um, an alternative form of government policy, um, albeit kind of, an alternative form of, of government, of, of, sorry, an alternative form of fiscal policy. Um, another point that you could make is that, so in paragraph two, we've said that um, the UK economy um, would, 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 would stagnate. The UK economy and the level of activity within the UK economy uh, would be negatively impacted um, if the government were to, were to cut spending. Um, 
point you could make here is if, if the government, or sorry, if the central bank wanted to um, negate this decline in um, economic activity, it could cut interest rates. And this is a point that you'd need to, um, you'd need to qualify. Obviously, the central bank, it operates independently from the government. So the government doesn't have control over the central bank. Um, but um, in, the, in the broader framework of things, um, if fiscal policy is failing to stimulate the economy, um, the Bank of England, it is within the Bank of England's kind of secondary mandate to, to stimulate economic activity. So um, if, if, um, if conditions within the economy were such that um, inflation was flagging, economic activity, the, so the outlook for economic activity was looking very weak, then the Bank of England would step in and it would um, reduce interest rates. We're going to finish off by looking at um, our last paragraph, our concluding paragraph. And although I, I've said paragraph one, you should be doing this, paragraph two, you should be doing this, and so on and so forth, there aren't really any hard and fast rules as to how you should structure your um, answer in terms of paragraphs. I, I think that um, this is quite a nice framework. Obviously, you can adapt it slightly, but I think um, paragraph, kind of first paragraph after your introduction wants to be your main argument then you want to talk about your counter-argument, and then you want to talk about alternative um, government policies. And this gives you an, a nice way to kind of structure your answer, making sure you're including all of those key points, which is going to get you up to your um, 22 to 25 mark bracket. Right, so your conclusion, um, <clears throat> keep it, keep it open-ended. As with your 25 mark question in unit one, you're not going to come up with a satisfactory answer to this question in just half an hour. Um, whether or not the government should... Um, or rather, um, the extent to which government spending should play a role in kind of wider economic policy. Um, it's been a matter of contention pretty much since the start of um, modern economic theory. So within in, in half an hour, you're probably not going to come up with, the, with, with a definitive answer. So leave it open-ended. Say, um, say that kind of cuts to government spending are going to depend on X, Y, and Z. Summarize your key points that you made um, in previous paragraphs in your essay. Um, and then I think that if you really want to, to be aiming up towards the top end of, of the mark spectrum, um, you want to be talking about the, um, or sorry, you want to be contrasting um, the importance of your different macroeconomic indicators. So remember, we've chosen a question which allows us to talk about our different macroeconomic indicators. So in this specific question, uh, primarily talking about economic activities, so GDP and unemployment, and also the budget deficit, uh, you want to be contrasting um, these variables and saying what's more important to the UK economy at the moment. Right, so if you go on my website, um, I run you through um, the key themes um, that the, the UK eco economy of, of is is facing at the moment. So looking at each of your macroeconomic indicators and, and saying where um, the UK economy stands in each of these. Um, so going back to the question, right, the, the UK economy, its budget deficit is very high. It's very high relative to other, um, it's very high both in the historic terms, it's very high um, compared to other developed economies. So um, you want to be referencing this and also the fact that the UK economy um, is performing very well. So in terms of GDP, GDP, um, is growing at a faster rate than almost every other um, developed economy. And also unemployment is, is falling and it continues to fall. Um, so you, you, can, you can talk about these two points and perhaps say that given that the UK economy is doing so well, yet we have this massive, massive budget deficit and, and a huge um, pile of debt, maybe the government should be prioritising cuts in government spending as opposed to, um, as opposed to stimulative uh, fiscal policy. Um, so that's that's my, my conclusion in a nutshell. Um, like I said, important, if you really want to aim for that top mark bracket, you want to be talking about um, the contextual elements of the UK economy. You want to be contextualising um, the UK economic performance. And like I said, I do run you through these kind of key points on my website. <laughs>